Hello fellow YouTube friends, followers, foods and flabbergasters, my name is Maisel and it's time for another Guild Wars 2 easy and flexible build guide. The goal of this guide is to enable you as much flexibility and low switching costs between PvE game modes on a particular class and elite specialization. This means that whenever possible I will use only one set of gear with slight alterations. To accomplish that goal I suggest gear that allows for high damage and the necessary defense slash support is accommodated for through traits, food and skill changes only. Today's class of choice is the Ranger and the elite specialization is the Soul Beast. We am going to talk about two different builds, an open world roaming build and a power DPS. But before we dive into the build, let's talk some pros and cons. Power Soul Beast has great burst and sustained damage with 35k DPS on the golem. The rotation is also very easy to memorize and has good range as well. Like all Soul Beast builds, it can supply utility at the cost of personal damage through stances and spirits. And finally, something that's often neglected, Ranger has great recovery potential from downstate, which is great for beginners. As cons, I guess you can say that the bolt is squishy in full DPS gear and it requires you to flank enemies for reaching its full potential. Let's dive into the build. Welcome to the Throw Beast. As a Throw Beast, we're doing awesome things like pulling lots of axes out of our butts and throwing them at the bad guys. Okay, that's all we do, but it's awesome enough, don't you think? Before we take a deeper dive into the build, let's take a look at the Power Soul Beast playstyle. Power Soul Beast is a very bursty class. Even with a simplified rotation like the one I use, the peaks go over 60k DPS pretty easily. Pets are the most important aspect of the class and specialization design. Soul Beasts gain the ability to merge with their pack to gain a few additional abilities at the cost of not being able to swap pets in combat. Merging with your pet also makes you receive all the benefits that your pet would otherwise receive and merging further increases some of your stats for the time that you merged. Also, you gain access to stances, which are pretty neat, but more on that later. In group content, you'll want to stay merged with a pet of choice at all times because it increases your DPS by a noticeable margin, through the increased stats from both Soul Beast and the Beast Mastery specialization. You can use several different pets, but in group content, they should all be from the Ferocious pet category because that increases your power and ferocity. My favorite pet combination for Open World are the Smoke Scale and the Jacaranda, while the Red Moa is the highest DPS choice for group content. Jacaranda is an insanely good tank that often draws aggro away from you because it has high toughness and engages in melee combat, so you can stay behind and not take any damage. It heals itself, grants you access to a good AoE damage skill and two additional heals when merged. In open world, keep it out as long as possible and when it is downed, so when it reaches two points of health, merge with it, use the skills if needed and then put it back out as soon as possible. This way, even the hardest open world challenges can become trivial because your pet has basically infinite health and keeps the aggro. For general open world roaming, in my opinion, the smoke scale is unbeatable. It has a knockdown, a short cooldown evade with a shadow step and the highest damaging beast ability in its kit while being a ferocious pet for higher power and ferocity. The red moa is ferocious as well and has the highest damaging pet ability with frenzied attack. The smoke scale and jacaranda come from Heart of Thorns and Path of Fire respectively, so if you don't have access to them yet, just use the brown bear for harder fights and the mower for anything else. The rock gazelle from Path of Fire is also worth a mention because it has a great CC skill as well as damage that is close to the mower, so if you need a CC skill on demand with close to no trade-off, it's a really good option too. Let's move on to the weapon skills. The weapon skills of this build are really simple because we'll only use dual axes. Ever since the recent buffs, dual axes are a great all-rounder weapon kit for rangers in general. That is because it has strong power coefficients and aside from X5, all skills have a range of at least 900. The auto attack ricochet is basic, grants you might and bounces to one additional target after hitting the first. Does great damage, simple to use. Split blade is the bread and butter skill, always use this on cooldown. The same applies to winter spite which does good damage and also applies a few soft CC conditions. On Soul Beast, CC skills have the passive benefit of triggering twice as wishes, which increases your damage by 10% for 10 seconds when disabling enemies. Your main source of triggering this is Path of Scars. This has a 9.5 second cooldown with Alacrity, so it maintains twice as wishes very well on its own as long as you have Alacrity. The final defense skill is Whirling Axe. Oh no, that's the other way around. The final axe skill is Whirling Defense, a skill that makes you stationary. Don't move while using this, it will interrupt the channel and put it on cooldown. This ability is the strongest damage ability in full AoE in your kit and is the only Axe skill that is melee. It applies large amounts of vulnerability and also makes you reflect projectiles while it is active. Since you cannot move while casting this, you need to look at your positioning before doing that. Especially on mobile fights, this ability can be quite difficult to use well, since we're also trying to fit this into the burst window. More on that when we talk about rotation stuff. 
Given that you need to use Path of Scars on cooldown to maintain Twice's Wishes, it makes sense to have an additional on-demand options for CC. We'll put a Warhorn on the offhand on the secondary bar because Call of the Wild dazes enemies and Hunter's Call does good damage and applies lots of vulnerability, so the trade-off for swapping to Warhorn every once in a while isn't that large. Moving on to utilities. As the heal skill we heal as one is too great not to use it. it gives you and your pet the boons affecting each other and heals both by a large amount. And on Soul Beast while merged, it will copy the boons that you already have. Boons that stack in duration will be extended and the ones that stack in intensity, so like might, will have their stacks doubled. This is insanely powerful and has a very short cooldown with the trait Resounding Timber. The same applies to Sikkim. Sikkim is really powerful on Soul Beast, so much so that rotation evolves around this skill. It has a 22.5 second cooldown with Alacrity and Resounding Timber and it grants you 25% additional damage for 10 seconds when merged with your pet. During those 10 seconds we'll go ham, pun intended here, and squeeze in as many high damage abilities as possible. More on that later in the rotation section. Next up we have Frost Trap. This is a really powerful skill that you should always use on cooldown. It does high damage and applies chilled. Both Sikkim and Frost Trap are flex spots in open world. If you don't stay merged with your pet, Sikkim loses much of its value and since many targets don't live for 10 seconds anyway, the value you get from the skill is reduced there anyway. In open world I usually go with Moa Stance for tons of boons and Signet of Stone for an oh shit button whenever I need one. With Signet of Stone we heal as one, you have a great combo to escape dangerous situations. When you don't use the active ability of Signet of Stone, it also makes you a little more resilient in open world, which is particularly good for beginners. As the elite skill you should always use one wolf pack for damage and strength of the pack for utility. Strength of the pack also provides 10 stacks of stability which can be very nice to have on demand since some bosses or mobs spam CC skills a lot. One wolf pack adds a secondary damage hit to your strikes with a 1 second cooldown so it adds a nice chunk of damage for the 6 seconds when it is active. Let's continue with gear and consumables. For power soul beast run full berserker. If you only have exotic gear, you'll need the precision it gives you anyway, and if you have ascended gear, it'll make you less reliant on flanking enemies. In open mode, you can gain survivability by letting your pet take the beating for you and constantly merging and unmerging again. In cases where that does not work, you can exchange your food or change a few traits to make yourself more survivable. Changing gear should always be the last resort unless you have legendary gear or don't care about investing additional money. The runes on the weapons are force and impact. I didn't find any significant difference between the impact and the air sigil on the golem, but the impact sigil is AoE and increases your damage against the seed enemies further, which makes it the better choice in my opinion. The rune of the armor is scholar. Don't worry about losing the 5 piece bonus in open world at times, it's not that big of a deal. Scholar simply provides the highest damage on this. If you use exotic gear instead, you can also run eagle for starters since it's much cheaper and gives you some additional precision. In terms of consumables, we'll do the standard things. We run power and ferocity food and a potent superior sharpening stone or any equivalent to it because they yield the highest damage again. If you can afford it, a writ of masterful strength can give you a nice little boost to power over the sharpening stone for group content. Now that we got skills and gear covered, let's go through the specializations and trade choices. As usual, I won't go through all of them, just the ones that are important to the playstyle of Soul Beast. The three specializations of choice are Beast Mastery, Skirmishing and of course Soul Beast. Beast Mastery is universally great for Soul Beast because it strongly enhances your pet and on Soul Beast it therefore enhances yourself the same way. It increases all of your stats aside from expertise, healing power and concentration, further boosts your damage while on high health, makes you move 30% faster and further reduces the cooldowns on X and command skills by 20%. All of this is great, never change these traits. For the master trait line you can freely choose those since none of those really enhance your damage. I usually go with natural healing since it makes your pet or you when merged more resilient. The second specialization is skirmishing and here you have some choices to make. I like to go with sharpened edges and hidden barbs for some passive bleeding damage but you can also make points for the other adapted master traits here. Generally this specialization also boosts your damage output by making you deal 10% more damage and gain 10% crit chance when you flank enemies. Flanking enemies means standing in at least 45 degrees to the left or right from where the enemy is currently facing, so the window for it is pretty forgiving with 270 degrees. You can also give yourself swiftness and fury when swapping weapons. It'll also make fury grant 40% crit chance and 250 ferocity instead of just 25% crit chance, so it is essential that you maintain that buff. In the open world build you'll easily do that with all the fury sources though. If you need higher fury uptime in your subgroup, you can run a spotter for a very small loss in DPS. And if you want your frost trap to line up with your burst window, you need to run trapper's expertise. 
Beast Mastery and Skirmishing are just by far the best damage combo of specs, so always keep them if you can. For the Elite Specialization Soul Beast, the trade choices are also pretty clear. We'll run Live Fast, Essence of Speed and Oppressive Superiority. With those traits, Soul Beast will make you deal increased strike damage while you have Fury, so once again, keep that boon up on you. You will also gain offensive boons when using Beast abilities, so your pet 3 skill, and have all boons extended when you gain Quickness. Especially the latter is incredibly powerful because it drastically enhances the uptime on all boons on you, making Soul Beast a very good choice in parks where boon uptime isn't great. Finally, Twice as Vicious makes you deal 10% increased damage after applying Hard CC and Oppressive Superiority increases your damage against enemies with lower health than you by 10%. Overall, these trade choices are optimized for damage. If you need survivability or utility, you can also swap some of them out. For example, Oppressive Superiority for Eternal Bond or Sharpened Edges for Primal Reflexes. You should be resilient enough for most content even with damage traits though, because you can always unmerge and have your pet tank for you and attack from range. In case you want to do something different than being a pass monkey, you can also provide Alacrity on Soul Beast. All you have to do for Alacrity on Rangers in general is to use Nature Magic with the Grandmaster trait Nature's Vengeance and slap on a bunch of spirits. On casting the active abilities of these spirits, you will provide Alacrity to 5 targets when the spirits teleport to the designated location. With a little bit of boon durations, so around 35%, you'll be able to cover Alacrity with the 4 spirits that you use very easily. For the best stat density, you can use weapons, your chest and or an amulet on Diviner instead of Berserker. Don't worry about not reaching 100% crit on this build, it's basically impossible without skirmishing unless you really want to change your gear set. Nature Magic is pretty cool in general since it will copy all your boons to your pet and make you deal more damage for every boon on you. The problem on Soul Beast is that both skirmishing and Beast Mastery are so powerful that dropping either is huge. Beast Mastery has more essential traits, so we will ditch skirmishing. Generally for the rotation you can stay merged with your pet at all times and use all skills on cooldown. With Stick Him On, you want to make sure that most of your skills go off in the 10 second window of it. I'll provide more info on which skills should fall into this window in the next section. That well, you'll provide Alacrity, Might, Fury and Regeneration with high uptimes on each. You should be able to deal like 22 to 23k damage this way on the Alacrity build, while keeping Alacrity and a few other boons up. Finally, let's talk about the DPS rotation. The rotation on Dual Axe Soul Beast is pretty simple but it requires some practice for the burst window timings. Stay merged with your MOA at all times. Also, you always want to use Path of Scars on cooldown to maintain twice as vicious. This has priority number one. As I said in the skill section, you center your rotation around the 22 second-ish cooldown of Sikkim. During the 10 second uptime of Sikkim, you want to squeeze in all of the following skills if they are off cooldown. Frost Trap, Will the Impact, Frenzy Attack, Split Blade, Winter Spite, Path of Scars and then Whirling Defense. Every other cycle you also want to squeeze in one Wolf Pack. The integration of Whirling Defense should always happen so that you don't have to interrupt it. So if you can, choose windows in which you do not have to move. With the Trade Sharpened Edges and Skirmishing, Frost Trap won't align with the Burst window so it'll fall outside of it every once in a while. If you want to use it in every window, use Trapper's Expertise, it's not that much of a DPS difference. In between burst windows, use auto attacks and cast split blades, path of scars and winter spite on cooldown. Sikkim has a longer cooldown than most skills in your burst windows, so you will have to slightly delay most of them. In actual gameplay, you should try to time your burst windows with boss phases. So don't burst when Samurok in Wing 4 has someone pinned for example. That can be difficult if you do a fight for the first time, but you do get used to that pretty quickly. In case the encounter you do requires CC, you can swap to your offhand Warhorn and use the Rock Gazelle. The rotation on the Throw Beast is very simple and feels very rewarding to execute in all PvE game modes. Right now it is probably my favorite power spec for raids and especially fractals. That's it for today, feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm, I hope this video was insightful for you and made you want to pull axes out of your butt, see you next time and happy MOA merging!